Let's talk about synchronicity. This is a word that's bounded about loads in this community. And we're going to look at five different types of synchronicity and uh, what they might mean for you. So if you're interested in this, then by all means, stick around. So synchronicity, it's my favorite word, actually, in this spiritual context. I just think it's um, illuminating uh, in me. And sometimes words have a lot of power, don't they? Have you ever noticed that? Where sometimes you'll just cry at words? Yeah, maybe just me on that one. But I think in a way, as we begin to break down the structure and the entomology of words, language makes a hell of a lot more sense and can be really, really powerful. Synchronicity implies the idea, synchro, isn't it? Like synchronization, like synchronized diving or swimming. It means at the same time, two coincidences, seemingly random, coming together at the same time. The more and further and longer you spend on this path, the more and more you're going to see these. And at some point also, then they will um, just become the natural organizing principle of life because that is what synchronicity is. If you imagine like an orchestra, well, there's a conductor, isn't there, that's conducting the orchestra, telling everybody to move at certain points, giving guidance, giving advice through a stick. <laughs> Not the normal way to give advice. However, we've all come into this existence to play out a role. We are one singular part of the larger puzzle of all that is. And therefore, we can also, and it seems that we have agreed to come in and pay to pay attention and receive messages through various different levels of synchronicity, mainly, in, at least in the first instance, numbers. We're going to talk about those in a moment. But just in the same way that the orchestra leader is using sticks to communicate, and it's not a usual way, so it takes perhaps a little bit of training and a little bit of time to begin to understand what the way those sticks moves mean. Flute! Ta-da! Oh, I get you. Then in the same way, these five things that uh, synchronicity is trying to uh, communicate through us with might also take a little bit of training because they're not usual, especially in this human realm. Uh, so the first type of synchronicity, and you all know this one, probably, is numbers. Synchronicities, repeating number patterns. Um, this is just the most simple way to describe it. Of course, each of the numbers can have different meanings and there is a whole science behind it and it's called numerology, if you're interested. Uh, another way to describe the same thing is angel numbers. I don't think it really matters how you describe it, but the meanings of the numbers are there and they're usually reasonably succinct. However, you don't have to go in and learn about what all of the numbers means. Uh, in a way, it's symbolism anyway. So just look at what the number looks like and that might give you an idea. For example, the number four. Uh, excuse me, number four. What does four imply? Four legs. So stability, foundations perhaps. Five almost looks like a fork in a road. So perhaps a change or something like this. Six, a pregnant lady. Anyway, you do what you like with those. And there are certain courses you can enroll in to find out exactly what they mean. I also have a video on it on the channel if you want to dive deeper into that. Number two, a second way synchronicity might uh, come up for you is in a meaningful moment where you feel wonderful flow and ease. Now, I'm not saying that when you're in that flow state, you're going to see loads of numbers, although you will. What I'm saying is actually the flow state is a secondary example of synchronicity itself. It's the guiding principle of life. And if you're in that flow state, then of course you are in life. You're in what we would call union or yoga or yoga because that's basically what we're teaching here, is the lessons that come out of yoga from our experience. To really understand something, it must be our experience, isn't it? Otherwise, we just think we know it, and we don't really know it. 
And so in this way, yoga is the biggest and best way I've ever found to be able to really connect ourselves, accelerate our awakening journey, but mainly connect ourselves to life. And if you're interested, there's an application form down below to the Freedom Blueprint. This is for the person that's ready to take that next step to take yoga seriously, to take their awakening path seriously, and take the systematic approach that yogis have been taking for millennia. It's tried, tested, and proven, and you only have to see the testimonials uh, on my website for that. That isn't free, it's paid. You have to put up your um, commitment monies, um, but it's like a six month course, so it's requires a lot from you so make sure you're you're that type of person if you want to apply down below number three a third way that we might be able to notice synchronicity or in fact the third way that synchronicity might arise inside of ourselves or in our life is through strange coincidences co meaning two incidences meaning incidences so two incidences coming together isn't it? Which look seemingly random, but in fact might have a deeper meaning if only that the meaning is to get your attention. Because it certainly will do that. And that will happen more and more and more. And then you'll go, wow, is this a miracle? Is there something to this? And the answer is really, I would say, absolutely yes. Because it does get your attention and it reminds you that you're in synchronicity with life. When those two elements, you and that thing that we call life, not that they're separate because they are one, and yoga means that, union, unifying those two elements, the, the uh, singular or the individual with the whole. Nonetheless, strange coincidences. For example, um, let's say I say fire. I couldn't think of any words there. It always happens, doesn't it, like that? I say the word fire and then a fire comes up on the TV or the laptop or something like that. This is one of those synchronistic coincidences, and I only say that because nothing is really a coincidence if we take this holistic approach to life. But I say coincidences because language is important, and what it really means is for there to be two things coming together in an incident but that made me think of a car crash. Nonetheless, we're now going to move on to number four. Number four, and this will probably be the final one, is meaningful connections. So this can happen that you meet somebody who is about to be, or already is, very important in your life journey, and you will feel that. For example, a teacher, I had to find a teacher after my awakening experience because I didn't know what on earth had happened to me and I needed to go and get the right advice from somebody that's been through it before. And the way you find a teacher is through feeling, basically. If it feels right, do it. Uh, even if you're only 10% in the rightness of our feeling of this could be a good teacher for me, do it. Um, because uh, what we don't know, we don't know, and that 10% of good feeling is the anchor or the the notification inside of ourselves that this is going to be really good for me. So meaningful connections, right place, right time. This can happen with teachers, yeah, can happen with um, relationships too. And although it may not feel, because we're very used to, isn't it, at the start of our life, to really charged emotions, this connection will probably feel more peaceful, more relaxed, which might freak us out because that what's, that's what tends to happen at the start of the journey, isn't it? We get scared. Oh my God, I'm losing all of this charge from life. And the, the thing is, is yeah, you are, but that's so inconsistent and it's child's play in comparison to the bliss and ecstasy that is naturally here so long as we stop buying in to those charged relationships because actually what they tend to be is toxic anyway there's four different types of synchronicity i uh, mentioned that <laughs> we were going to say uh, going to do five at the start um but i think four's enough yeah, four's enough. Really, they come to give you guidance. They come to get your attention, you know, and remind you sometimes that you're on track. But one thing I will add is just this fifth point. If you're not seeing synchronicities, don't worry. You haven't done anything wrong. I was doing my yoga teacher training course, the first one, 
and uh, I wasn't seeing any synchronicities at all. And everyone was talking about it, and I was like, oh, what does this mean, you know? Oh, well, I'm not feeling them. Maybe I'm not on the right course. But in time, you do start to see them. And what it took, really, for me was to begin doing and teaching yoga. And then as that happened, the synchronicities began to explode in my life in a really crazy way. You are going to experience miraculousness and because that's what synchronicities are, they're little miracles. And that's going to continue to expand and grow as you keep putting the energy that's needed into your body through the practice of sadhana. So here's to your synchro destiny. Lots of love. Namaste.